idiots write stupid things and others read them. David cursed, flipping through his favorite newspaper dedicated to a healthy lifestyle. It was there, in the section of jokes and curious incidents, that he saw a story that completely changed his well-established life. The story was indeed simple, slightly naive and unpretentious. A husband decided to test the love of his wife and mistress, pretended to be maimed, and asked a faithful friend to inform both women about his pitiful condition. Of course, the young mistress promptly rejected the one she had passionately sworn eternal passion to just yesterday, while the wife, tormented and scrutinized inside out, rushed to the hospital, declaring that her beloved husband was needed in any con In any condition. Yes, in any. If only I don't find myself in such a situation, knock on wood, Mr. David grumbled and began reading a useful article on lowering cholesterol. However, the silly story somehow touched David, and unexpectedly, a mischievous thought stirred under his bald spot. And what if? The thing was that both a loving and faithful wife and an equally loving mistress existed for David, and he was torn between them, tormenting both with lies and promises. Whom to choose? David even consulted with friends, dull, family-oriented people who couldn't understand what it was like at 53 to feel love again, see passion and adoration in the eyes of a young girl, beautiful, full of energy, talk to her about books and music instead of family problems and repairs, inhale the scent of her hair, subtle, almost imperceptible, and the hair was uncolored, silky without a hint of gray, and the skin was smooth, fresh without signs of withering. So David told his friends all this, and he saw not envy, but a slight misunderstanding in their eyes. David, each age has its charms and experiences. Don't try to outsmart Mother Nature. After all, she's a woman too, she'll get revenge, his friends said. And you still consider yourself young. What's the difference? David was angry, preferring not to notice this unpleasant fact. Huge difference. She'll want to dance and your gout will want to lie on the couch. And what? Will such love end soon? I don't have gout, David shouted in response and he became more convinced that his love with Sandy was a rare gift from heaven, although not so uncommon. Just look at various famous people in such unequal marriages. There are dozens of them. And what's worse, with money, or rather the lack of it? If you've started comparing, then all of you can go. David yelled and regretted letting such people into his feelings. What have you turned into? Gossipers on a bench. I hope at least you won't relay this conversation to your wives, David said. His friends took offense at David, seriously offended. They called him an old lecker and stopped inviting him for Friday beers and preferans. I can do without you. I'm even glad. David rejoiced because now he could confidently spend Fridays with his beloved Sandy. After all, his wife, Esther, knew nothing about the quarrel and continued to think that David was out late with his... With Sandy, everything was so good that David sometimes got scared. They understood and felt each other and they both aided the same pastry. There were so many points of contact and coincidences that David often scolded fate for making him born so early or Sandy born so late. Did David think about divorce? He stopped himself hundreds of times not only because he didn't want to hurt his once beloved wife, Esther. Peter Petrovich seriously believed that she wouldn't survive the separation and would simply die. David didn't want the new life to be overshadowed by death, but there was also an, an incomprehensible melancholy haunting him. When they marry Sandy, she'll finish college, start working, and they'll have to earn for their own home. David, being a noble person and a true man, will undoubtedly leave his wife and children. Then Sandy will want to have a child, maybe a second and possibly even a third. David will be happy about it, undoubtedly. But what does it all mean? It means starting all over again, from the beginning. On the one hand, it's interesting, but on the other, it's all been there, done that. And how happy will he be, and will he be able to make Sandy happy? And there's the age difference. 
No matter how David tried to reject these facts, they couldn't be avoided, not with flowery words. It's easy to say that age is just a number in your passport when you have a million possibilities. But when there are far fewer, all these thoughts, densely mixed with passion, didn't let David rest. Sandy couldn't part with her. He was drawn to her like a magnet. If he doesn't see her for a few days, he goes crazy with longing. As for Xenia, he got used to her. Let love pass, but in return, friendship with a dear person appeared. Someone studied to the tips of their nails. No surprises, no tantrums or scandals. It's routine, but sometimes it's quite... Daughters, again, soon to be brides. Before you know it, they'll say they're getting married. And then, grandchildren are not far off. What to do? Why is everything so complicated? And what if, just like that, Sandy and Esther check? The thought itched in his head, didn't let him rest. It will be something like drawing lots, only I won't throw it. Or should I? David pondered the dubious idea and began to understand that this check was not as silly as it seemed. Quite decent and appropriate if you think about it. And he has a friend, not a doctor, a sanitary worker, but he works in the intensive care unit. With bandages, he can wrap it up so that no one doubts that David got into a terrible accident. And aren't you afraid? His friend, the sanitary worker, surprised him with a question when David, almost jumping with impatience, outlined the wonderful plan for checking loving women. What? David didn't understand. That both of them will refuse you. What then? Well, that won't happen. I know them, David confidently replied. And if they both come, it turns out you won't be able to choose, or will you give them the right to fight for you? It did sound awkward, but David, trampling logic, became noisy and said that he takes all responsibility and the sanitary friend only needs to call both of them. And it's none of your business whether they come or not, David rudely added, immediately regretting it, as his friend demanded another bottle of bitter tincture as compensation for emotional trauma. Where's your soul from? David almost worsened the situation, but managed to restrain himself. We agreed, make the call. Sandy decided to be the first. The dorm she lived in was very close. And if she said that time was running out for bandaging, there wouldn't be much to do, but there was no need to hurry with the wife. David's house was on the outskirts of the city. Until Emter arrived, the whole department could be bandaged. Call, David decisively handed the phone to his friend, the medic. Sandy answered immediately, as if she had been waiting for her beloved's call. But instead of cooing something like, hello, my love, I missed you so much, she barked. I told you I don't have to. I have to submit my coursework tomorrow, asked not to disturb. Can't you at least listen a little to what I'm telling you? Sandy hung up. She spoke so fast and angrily that the medic friend couldn't get a word in. Call again, David got irritated. The subscriber didn't want to talk. The phone was turned off. To the wife, should we call? Call, the reception was terrible. Something hissed and crackled in the receiver as if it wasn't the 21st century with its technologies, but the musty 20th and David, or rather his medic friend, was calling somewhere in the backwoods where there was only one phone booth for the whole village. Yes, the wife's voice was distorted by interference. Mrs. Esther, the hospital is calling you. Just don't worry, your husband. The friend made a dramatic pause and David belatedly got scared, wondering if Esther would faint. What if she's cooking now and spills a pan of boiling oil on herself? Images, one scarier than the other, flashed through David's mind and the friend meanwhile enjoyed the moment. Had an accident, all in plaster. Paralysis is possible. Esther was silent. David felt sick. What? The wife finally spoke, and David sighed with relief, but also with resentment. He lies there all in plaster, and she didn't even faint in horror. Your husband had an accident. Just don't worry. Doctors, I mean me, his treating doctor, say everything will be fine. David held his breath. 
this is the moment of truth. Now he will find out how strong Esther is. She will rush to the hospital consumed by anxiety, tearful and tormented by dreadful conjectures, or... David didn't finish his thought because Esther said something strange. Have you already completed your shift? She asked. Yes, replied the bewildered sanitary worker. Why? So you're not busy, Esther clarified. No. Then wait a bit, okay? I'll be quick. What should I do? Whispered the sanitary worker. David shrugged. He didn't expect this from Esther. What was she thinking? Are you still here? Esther's voice, soft and interrupted by static, came from the receiver. Yes. I poured myself some coffee and cut a piece of pie. I just baked it with apples and cinnamon. It turned out delicious. One David sniffed and caught a whiff of the tasty aroma. The sanitary worker turned pale and wiped his forehead. So, everything about David is a lie. I made it up today. Everything's fine with my dog and even his hemorrhoids are slowly improving. I haven't seen any accidents or mishaps. His mistress will dump him soon. That's a fact. Well, it's understandable. She's young and he's just annoying. He's worn out his welcome. Hear that, Bunny. Doctor, David can hear us, right? Yes, the sanitary worker whispered, but Esther probably didn't hear him. The connect... David, let's make a deal. Whatever happened, happened. Let's forget this cruel prank and your mistress. You deal with her yourself so I won't have to intervene. Agreed? David licked his dry lips and nodded, as if Esther could see him. Good. Buy some bread, Esther concluded matter-of-factly, ending this unusual conversation and hung up. Is she a witch or something? The sanitary worker was as white as a new hospital sheet. David, with trembling hands, blocked Sandy's number and wrote, Around this time, Mum, I forgot my phone at your place. Well, luckily I remembered just in time. I didn't get on the bus. Did anyone call? Out of breath, Sandy rushed into her mother's house. Your husband called, asking if we need to buy bread or not. Oh, of course we need to. I'll call him back now. No need, I told him to buy it. I have to run. Maybe you'll have some coffee after all. No, I still need to prepare dinner. Did the pie finish baking? Yes, it did. I'll wrap half of it for you now. Oh, it smells amazing, Mom. Thank you, dear. I'll run now. Call me when you get home. Okay, but the connection here is terrible. I can't hear any... Esther put the pie in her bag, kissed her mother, and hurried away. Esther's mother finished her coffee, carefully turned the cup over. For some reason muttered some words to it, and holding the cup in her hands, stared into the coffee grounds. Well, now everything is in order. She didn't like her son-in-law for his self-satisfaction and cosmic absent-mindedness.